What's up guys and gals and welcome to the first episode of Stranded Deep, a game which puts players in control of a character trying to survive in the Pacific after a plane crash. Now Stranded Deep is a little bit different from other survival crafting games because I can hear you all rolling your eyes right now. Yes indeed, there are a lot of early access crafting survival games out right now. That seems to be... I guess it's very much in vogue right now. Why survivalism is so popular at the moment, I'm not really sure, but it is something that is near and dear to my heart. I personally am a geologist. People from my channel will know this, but for people coming in through search, I'm a geologist, which means that you spend a lot of time out in the middle of nowhere, like doing survivalism-like stuff. We do surveys, which usually leave you about five hours from the nearest city, maybe an hour from the nearest village, like tiny little hamlet. Mmm, hamlet. I love ham. Anyways, it leaves you a long ways from any any sort of supply or rescue if something goes wrong. And so personally, while I hope for the best, I always plan for the worst, and so I enjoy studying survivalism. And so games like these are of peak interest to me, and they also pique my interest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop doing the wordplay right now, and let's just get started with the game. How about that? <gasps> Alright, so it looks like we're on some kind of like personal passenger jet from what I can tell. I don't know if we're like uber wealthy. What is this called? It's got the... Something tri- I don't know, it says the only something- I don't know, I can't read properly right now and old English fonts don't do it for us. Luckily, our laptop is very, very shiny. On the plus side, we have a shiny laptop. Whatever else you can say about this man's life, he's in a private jet and he has a shiny laptop, so I assume we're somebody important. Let's go make ourselves a martini, how about that? So if you want to craft something, anything that can be interacted with is going to be orange. From there, you're going to click and hold, and then you're going to let go. Click on the thing you want to make out of all of the materials that are standing piled up. We're going to set the martini on fire, because apparently liquor is better once it's flaming. I don't really know. I've never had a martini on fire before. I don't think I've ever had a martini. Too classy for me. Paps Blue Ribbon. That's all it requires to get my pants off. Mmm, delicious martini. Let us drink it and put it in our mouth, because I get the feeling that very shortly, we're going to need a stiff drink. A very, very stiff drink. My worst flight, god, that turbulism, or the turbulence, turbulism, it's the turbulism, anyways, turbulence, the worst turbulence I ever had was on a flight from Atlanta to Sacramento, it was absolutely awful, like even experienced flyers were looking quite nervous about the fact that the ship was rattling, or the, it's not a ship, the plane, the plane was rattling, much like that right there, although this next part didn't happen, or else I would not be here, but yeah, my god. This is like one of my worst nightmares, like, I've seriously had this nightmare before, I'm pretty sure. Plane crashes, I am not a good flyer. At all. I figure that if my ass was supposed to be way up in the air, it'd have wings on it, or I'd have some kind of, I don't know, jetpack. It would come standard, you'd have a biological jetpack attached to my back. That'd be kind of weird though. It'd be like a big back flap thing that also propels gases and helps you fly. Either way, I feel like I'm taking the edge off this situation right now. Oh good, we're underwater. I don't know if we blacked out for the first- No, our martini! That's actually a wine glass. It's ruined! Alright, well let's swim out of the hatch. I don't think the pilots are gonna make it. The pilot and or co-pilot looks like he's done. Hopefully we don't have any sharks here. I don't know how long you can stay underwater either. I have no idea. Luckily, what's the expiration date on a little rubber dinghy? Hopefully it's somewhere greater than 10 years. I hope. I don't know. A lot of survival situations that I've seen... Hmm... Yeah, there it is. So Les Stroud did an episode of Survivor Man where he did a scenario where he was in a rubber raft after a proposed plane crash or maybe after a ship went down. He was in a survival raft and oh hell no. We got like a bull shark right there. That's my next, after plane crashes, you know what I know what my next fear is? Sharks. Oh my god. Although that shark, he's not that big. I don't know if he would mess with a human. Sharks in general... It's only the real big ones that would fiddle around with the human, and apparently they don't like the way we taste either. Because from what I've heard, sharks will typically bite us and then let go because humans don't taste very good. Of all the traits to have, I'll take it. Where is... Oh, there's a, there it is. We've got a paddle. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like he's circling us right now. Will he attack the raft? I don't know. I don't want to find out. Get away, shark. Eh. I stab you. Sh no, not with a water bottle. Stabbing with a water bottle. I stab you, shark. Look. I've got a knife. I'll cut you, man. I'll cut you, man. Don't come near this. Don't come near this raft. It'll get real. I'm just floating right now. Don't come at me. All right. I'm gonna st I don't think he's hostile. I don't think he's coming at us. Let's go ahead and get going for, I guess, this island over here. It appears as though I can click and paddle, like, through our raft. But Les Stroud did a situation like this where he was surviving after a potential or a proposed plane crash. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a tiger shark. Did he just bump the bottom of the raft? Oh, hell no. Oh, that was deeply un... Did he dive? Where is he? Oh, that sucks. Let's go. No, paddle faster. I've got this horrible Jaws has just ruined the ocean for everybody. That film has single-handedly ruined both sharks and the ocean for, like, everybody, and I'm out. Can I see him? 
Oh, he's... No, there he is. He's following us. Oh, you little bastard. You snarky, toothed little... Mm, all right, I'm going on the island. Nope. We need to get back to the island to quote Lost. Oh, that was a magnificent jump. Maybe we had a career as some kind of, like, survival slash basketball player. Survivalist slash basketball player. We can actually drag things with us, so that's nice. If you right-click and hold down, you'll drag things. I'll treat this like a little bit of a tutorial. I am playing with, like, the crafting list and some of the early guides open on my other screen so that we won't get bogged down and confused by things that need to get done. But for right now, I think the first things that we need to focus on are any sort of lashing or twine because those things are very, very important. Now, I don't know what we can use on those sort of things, but the first thing you want to do in any survival situation is remain calm. If you get upset, seriously, if you get upset and you start panicking, you're not going to be long for this world. It's, it drains your resources, it makes you unnecessarily tired, and it removes your focus from the situation at hand. And if you're in a situation like this, you very much need to focus. You need to keep a straight head, and you need to just, like, take stock of what you have. Now, with these tiny little chains right here... Ooh, this is a somewhat interesting survival situation, and one that I am not really familiar with. Most of my expertise comes from, like, desert survival, and otherwise, like, forest-related, just general sylvan alpine survival. Not necessarily freezing tundra survival, but there's a rock right there. You do have limited inventory space, so this is all you've got. Be aware that this is, the about, this is about the best that it goes, so, like, be careful with your space right now. We can chop down trees with our knives. Looks like we got some coconuts up there. Can we harvest them? You can climb trees, as far as I know. So yeah, there it is. We can go straight up the side of the tree right now. Being able to climb with one hand like that is actually pretty impressive. I'm going to grab these out of the tree, and this is actually much easier said than done. In real life, it's actually kind of a pain in the ass to get these off the tree. And then you just press down to go back down the tree. Do not jump off. It's a great way to, like, crack your feetsies open. And I like my feetsies uncracked. I like them intact, the receptacles for blood and bone that they are as they are. What is that sticking out of the water over there? Hmm... It's one of the famous and rarely seen water wangs. It's kind of like a sea cucumber, but it likes to protrude out of the water in a sort of crude fashion. Anyways, we've got some rocks. That looks like a stick over here. Let's go grab that. I don't know how... Oh, we're actually full up. All right, well, this will be the spot right now where we'll leave our stuff. If you want to drop things, it's the Q button. So be prepared right there. I don't want to quote Scar too much because he's a bad guy, but be prepared. There you go. There's your song of the day. So we've got coconuts, a lot of them, in fact. Get the coconuts out here. So this is going to be our food stock for the next little bit. Now you want to be careful with coconuts because they're a natural diuretic, which means they actually are... Is it diuretic? I don't know if that's the right word. No, they're a natural laxative. That's the word that I'm looking for. Coconuts are a natural laxative, and the last thing that you need right now is diarrhea. So if you get into a situation like this, I'm not saying not to eat. You should eat. You should keep yourself tapped in, hydrated, all nice on food, but just be careful and be aware that some foods in large amounts will drain you and they will cause you to shit yourself inside out, which is a problem. Got to levitate. Oh, what is that, a crab? Can I kill it? Hold on. Oh, we can. Okay, so having killed the crab right now, been on the island for five minutes and already we've got crabs. Seems like my island adventure has gotten off to a weird start. Let's go ahead and drop this crab right here. Actually, can we take it? Okay, and so dropping, I think the crab got bigger once it was in our inventory. I think we got some Honey, I Shrunk the Kids action going on right now, except in the opposite direction. What we can do with crab, I'm not really sure, but with shellfish, you always have to cook it. Don't eat shellfish raw. I think you can eat crab raw. Don't quote me on that one. I'm not super experienced with shellfish, but either way, given the risks involved, getting yourself a nice case of salmonella or salmonella or whatever else, I would avoid it personally. What is this? Is any of this lootable? Let's keep taking a look around until we see, ah, there it is, out of the corner of my eye, we've got a yucca plant over here. Yucca plant can be used if you have, like, a lanyard maker, you can pull the leaves into little strips and you can make, like, twine or lanyards or whatever you need out of them. And people would underestimate, but rope is very, very useful in a situation like this, seriously. You, if you don't have rope, the situation is bad, but I think if we can use our knife, we can left click this right here. There it is. We've got lashing now. And so the lashings will continue until our survival situation increases. I'm just going to pile these up over here because the game revolves around you piling stuff around. And so there it is. Now, once we have enough objects, we'll be able to left-click hold, and the contextual menu should come up. But for right now, we've got nothing. I'm going to say that the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a fire because I don't know how the tides are going to look around here. Setting up on the beach seems like a decent idea, though. This is a really, really tiny island, and that makes me nervous about the whole thing. That At some point, we're going to have to go out to somewhere else. We're also going to have to come up with some kind of like labeling scheme to remember that this is an island that we can access. Let's pick up this stick right here, play a game of pick-up sticks. We'll go ahead and invoke our younger years. We've got a, not to be confused with the wonder years, obviously. 
We got a rock over here. Well, the island's looking a little bit barren, to be honest. There is stuff here, but it's nothing that's looking amazingly useful to me. I think we need three sticks, and we need... Ooh, I don't know. I think we need three sticks and something else to make a fire pit so we can start roasting our food and getting ready. If you wanted to open up, you're probably wondering where the HUD in, is in this game. It's actually pretty delightfully hidden, and I like that. You don't have a HUD in real life. Why would you have a HUD here? You press the F key, and then if you left-click with this open, it's going to tell you all your various stats. So apparently you've got one of these survival watches. Actually, my brother-in-law has one of these. It's pretty cool where it counts your calories. It looks just like that, in fact, except it's a little bit like shinier and more fancy. It's not made out of plastic. It's actually made out of like solid steel, but it goes down to like a thousand meters or something like that before something goes wrong with it. It's actually waterproof pretty deep and then it keeps track of all your vitals, like your heart rate and everything else. Pretty cool little watch. Pretty cool little watch. You can sync it with your iPod and a bunch of other stuff. Just in case you need some island jams. It looks like we've got good health. Our food supply is down a little bit. Our water supply is looking good though. So water is honestly, you can go a long time without food. It's that water that you've got to be concerned about. Now, going out into the ocean, I don't know how the whole shark situation is going to work, but I know you can swim in this game. How about we just give it a little bit of a cursory swim for the time being and just kind of like swim what can be swum, and after that we'll see what we can find. Can I catch that little sardine? I have to kill it first. Okay. Can we make spears or anything else? Oh, that's gorgeous. I love underwater. Like, seriously, I'm afraid of sharks and stuff like that, but I've always been attracted to water. My family is Hawaiian on one side, and... I think what comes with that is a healthy respect and like a joy, an enjoyment of the water. People look at you kind of funny if you have a Hawaiian family and you don't like water. They're like, so wait, you're Hawaiian and you don't like water? I'm like, yeah, something like that. But no, I love water. It looks like we can craft something right now. We can make a crude axe or a crude hammer. Let's start with the axe. We need one lashing remaining as far as I know in order to, oh yeah, great. Looks like we got our rust action going on right now. Yeah, that'll work for us. I don't think if it's a, I don't know if it's a wise idea to deforest the entire area just yet, but for now, let's try chopping down a tree and we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously the beginning of every adventure in this game requires, every survival game to be honest, requires wood to be a thing that you get your hands on. And yeah, that goes a lot better. I tried chopping down a tree when I first started playing with a knife and it did not go so well. You can do it. So I'll explain that, I guess, as a survival tactic. So let's say you wanted to chop down a tree with a knife. If you've got a rock, you can do this, so don't panic. You can take the knife. And what you want to do is you see how the blade is sort of inclined against the side right there? That's exactly what you want to do. You want to face it with a downward incline and you want to hit it with a rock or hit it with whatever else. It'll knock a chunk out of the tree. What you want to do then is you're going to unplug it from the tree and then you're going to put it right below the first notch you've made facing upwards at an upwards incline towards the tree. So it's the incline is going upwards if it's going towards the tree, downwards if it's going away from the tree. But anyways, you'll go basically the opposite of the way you put it down for the first hit. You're going to angle it up for the second hit. It's going to knock a wedge out of the tree and you're going to keep going like that until the tree falls over. Rinse and repeat until you get the results that you want. Since we're playing a survival game, I figured I would bring it in. We can drag this tree with us, I think, until we get over here and you could do that by right clicking on any object and just moving it the way that you see fit. I think the sun, we're going to stare directly at the sun for a second, but it definitely looks like we are on the back end of the day. This is going to give us some directional sense as well versus like west and east, so that'll be nice. Let me bring this over to here. What we can do now is from this trunk, I think we can harvest, maybe, I think we can harvest logs. Let's try here. I don't know how long this is going to take or how efficient this is going to be, but we're going to give it a go. We may need to strip it with another object. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I don't think it is. Oh, no, it did work. Never mind. We're good right here. It says that it's got palm branches on this side. How do we separate them from the tree? Just by clicking. Let's keep clicking. I bet if we keep clicking, it'll work. Just keep clicking. Just keep clicking. See, I'm writing a little song right now. Palm fronds. I don't know what we use those for, but I'm going to put them up in my inventory. And since this game relies on you, like, piling things, I'm just going to make a pile of everything that we have so that in the off chance we need all this stuff, we can make something out of it. So we can make a crude hammer with the other lashing. And once we've got that, I think we need to find ourselves another yucca plant so that we can get a bit more. I mean, I'd like to have a good stock of rope. It's always pleasurable to have a good stock of rope. I think that's going to be the first adventure that we have here. Come on. Very nice. Two more lashings. All right, so now that we've got rope, I mean, there's a number of things you could do. Personally, I'd get to work making a lean-to. If you wanted to make a lean-to, it's not actually that difficult. It's fairly simple. Oh, we got another stick right there, too. It's fairly simple, although I don't want to invoke fairness too much in this situation. Oh, there's a potato plant? Well, hell. What's a potato plant doing on a desert island? That's a little bit odd. It regrows, too, from what I can tell. If you can see right there, there's a little sprout underneath. I don't know. Let's start gathering up some crab, though. I think it might be a good idea. The crabs are all trying to get the hell on out of here. 
I think I'll grab as many as I can. Oh, we're full up. Okay, so let me dump the remainder over here on this side. Yeah, it looks like nighttime's coming. One of the ways that Stranded Deep is going to differ from other survival games is that this is going to be much more like The Long Dark than it's going to be like, say, Seven Days to Die or Seven Days... What's the name of that game? I don't know, with the zombies. Anyway, it's going to be different from H1Z1 and other survival games that have monsters and other pertinent interests having to do with fanged beasties. Because this is going to focus on realism, and so not going to see any monsters running around. The problems that are going to face you in this game are very much going to be real problems like dehydration, sharks. I mean, I don't know if a shark would be counted as a real problem in this case, but I guess I'll give the shark the benefit of the doubt for right now and assume that it's not coming for me. What can I do with all this? We still just have crude axes and crude hammers. Okay, what if I go over to the rock? We can still only make that. On this side, it says we need three sticks in order to make a campfire, and I think that's where our primary malfunction is going right now. Let's see if we can find ourselves another stick. I don't know if they respawn or if I'm going to have to outsource for this. Maybe go to one of those other islands to bring back another stick to survive with. But in any case, it might be a better idea in this situation. You really, really, really don't want to be out on the water once it's dark. You might get yourself... I mean, you're on an island right now, which means that on one hand, at least you're not out in the ocean. That's a plus, because when you're out in the ocean, if you end up getting capsized or anything else, you have no way to get water, you have no way to get anything to survive. I don't see anything over here that can be used. Can I actually harvest this boat at all? Let me see if maybe I can use my axe to try and isolate bits of wood off of this or something. No. So we can't get wood from a boat. We are not, like, thusly mechanically inclined. That's not the sort of thing that gets us all hot to trot. I don't see any other sticks around. I don't know if we can maybe... Yeah, we can't hit that right there, so we can't knock those down. They aren't interacting with our axe at all. Let's have another look around for some more yucca, because obviously I want to have a huge stockpile of just, like, random stuff so that this is basically our home base. Everything we bring back in over here, you know, just useful stuff. I think we can still keep hitting on it. I don't know. Let's keep sending drinks its way and just trying. It looks like it's just going to keep spawning lashing, maybe, or that's all we could get out. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Can I eat this? I can. Okay, so you can eat the potato raw. That doesn't seem incredibly delicious, but let's see how much this helps. Well, I got our food back up, and then from these over here, I think we can get hydration. So in order to get the coconut open, what you're going to need to do is you actually need to take out a axe or a knife, and you're just going to smack the coconut for a second. You put the axe in the coconut and drink it all up. Oh, it's a drinkable coconut now. So now that we've got that, we've actually knocked a hole in it. And I think if you take this, yeah, there it is. A coconut is actually a little bit more difficult. How is our hydration? Okay, so our hydration's looking good. I'm going to take the coconut with me for now, just in case something goes wrong on the water. And let's go out to, where's our raft at? Our raft is over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set sail from the side of the island that I'm familiar with. So let's drag this as far as we can for right now. Is it still coming along with us? No, we let go of it. This could be a long and arduous process getting this over here. All right, well, I'm not going to say this situation is a drag, but it is a literal drag. So let's bring this over to this side. The sun is going down over there, which allows us to know that the island... Where is that? Is it is? Oh, please tell me that it's going down on the same side as the boat. It is. Okay, so that means that we know that the boat... So this right here, this is actually good because we actually have a positional reading right now. We actually know where our cardinal directions are right now. We know that this is the west end of the island. So if we look over the boat like this, we're on the west end of the island, which would make that north for the time being, which would make that east for the time being, which would then I'm actually rotating too far. So let me get that on my side. So that's going to be north. That's going to be east. And that's going to be like southish. And then when we come back, yep. All right. So at least we know where we're going right now. And so in the interest of keeping... I'm going to sail east. Let's see if we can go east for right now. I don't know if we can freeze to death, but we can't make a campfire until we get more sticks. And so I don't know if they drop from trees or where we get them from. I'm a little bit conflicted right now as to whether I should go for chopping down another tree in the attempt to make a fire before it gets dark. Or if I should attempt to go after another island. I don't know. It's, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. In real life, I would never set sail right before or set and it's not sailing i would never set paddle then i would never set paddle before the sun went down still i let me i'm gonna beach this raft let's not do it for right now i'm gonna i'm gonna chicken shit out right now for a second and i'm gonna say that sailing in the dark is probably a bad plan especially considering i don't know how dark it's going to get and the answer to that question is it looks like pretty dark Unfortunate. Let's grab the axe and see if we can get another stick out this way. But we need to make a fire because freezing on a tropical island, I doubt it. I mean, I don't know. I've spent a lot of time on Hawaii and on Oahu where, you know, my family lives. And frankly, it doesn't get that cold. At night, it's like, eh, 
like mid 70s obviously native hawaiians feel free to correct me here if i'm wrong because i don't go there as much as say somebody that lived out there so let me know what the temperatures are like out there because that's something you would want to be aware of in this situation the lighting oh my god the game is gorgeous just look at that right there. I mean, everything has kind of like a waxy finish, but at the same time, it looks good. I don't know if I could turn logs into sticks, maybe? I don't know how this whole thing works, but I'm going to keep whacking on this log for a second since we've already got one, and I'm just going to see what pops out the other end. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so now we're looking good. Now we're looking good. All right. So since we've got this, let's bring the rocks over here. I think we need a bunch. I don't know how many rocks we need, but I'm willing to bet it's probably a lot. We need one lashing for this to work properly. So we'll throw the lashing on top. Let's go ahead and start stockpiling things. So we'll put the lashings next to the tree over here so that we've got a stockpile of them. I'm going to take all the sticks. We'll throw them in here. So there's our stack of sticks. We've got palm fronds. I would make a lean-to. How you make a lean-to is actually fairly simple. So a lean-to, what you're going to do is you take a stick, and you're going to stick it into the ground, and you're going to cross them like an upside-down V. You're going to step over. You're going to make another upside-down V wedged into the ground. Across the top of that, there's going to now be a little V on top of the big Vs where the opening of the V is down into the ground. There's going to be a little V. You're going to put a stick across that. You're going to use lashing to tie that right there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take these palm fronds, and you're going to go from the ground up and over the top bar, and you're going to lash that in real quick. Just lash it in. And as that goes down to the ground, you can come up with different mooring systems on the other end. But that's just going to give you a little bit of shelter from the rain. It's better than nothing. It's something that you can get up and under. And God, that stick out in the water scared me. I thought we had some kind of like water walking, terrifying zombie out there in the mist. God, my head's playing with me right now. These can go over here. I don't know what they're useful for right now. So we'll play with those in just a second. We've got rocks. How many rocks do we need for a campfire? For a fire pit, we need... Six rocks, it looks like. Do we have six rocks? We don't have six rocks, do we? Okay, so let's throw these coconuts over here, because obviously I don't think we need that many right now. In terms of our long-term survival, obviously I think we have a lot of food right now, but we need six rocks for this to work. That sucks. So we're actually going to need a lot of rocks in order for this to function. Oh, you can make a campfire right here. We can actually, I guess we'll just make a rudimentary one then. Oh, it takes five sticks. Okay, so we'll make a campfire. We'll drop this right there. That seems good. Yeah, and we need our lighter to make this work. Oh, there it goes. Okay, all right. So now for the stick, let's get this started. For the stick, we need what looks like lashings, and we need a couple more sticks for this to work. I don't know how long this is going to stay lit. Is our body temperature shown right here? 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's go to the other end of the island. We'll play with this mechanic real fast. I apologize for it being dark. I think we can use this to light up the dark a little bit, though. If I go over here, what's the temperature looking like? 108 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's actually pretty hot out right now. No, I think that's actually my my body temperature for the moment. If we go out into the water, does it go down? I'm just trying to get a feel for the way some of these different mechanics work. I don't know if they've been implemented or not. I will be keeping an, out, an eye out for them just in case. I'm going to set an owl out for them, and I'm like, yeah, if your eye is out, that would definitely be an owl-related situation. I would absolutely 100% say owl if my eye was out. But anyways, this is what we're going for. I think that for right now, we've got a fire. We've got basic sustenance. For the time being, I'm going to call it quits right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Stranded Deep. If you want to get the game, it's $14.99 on Steam right now. Look down below. I will have a link for you. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, hi-do. A fond farewell and hi-do from me to you.